Roses are red, violets are blue. Don't let a wild pube wreck you. Valentine's Day is just around the corner and our sponsors at Manscaped are here for you with the best tools to get your balls ready for the special occasion. This Valentine's Day, it's time to join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped, the leaders in below the waist grooming with our exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code CUPODCAST for 20% off and free shipping. The holidays went by so quickly. Did you remember to take care of your package with the best tools for the job? The Reformance Package 4.0 from Manscaped is just the thing every guy needs in their life to make each and every day just a little more special. The number one product in this package is the Lawnmower 4.0. This electric trimmer is designed to trim hair on loose skin. And get this, the trimmer's advanced skin safe technology reduces cuts and nicks on your delicate balls. It even has a 4000K LED spotlight so you can shave anywhere your heart desires. Did I mention that it's waterproof too? The package also includes the Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer to whack all the worst of your weeds. Manscaped even threw in two, not one, two free gifts their shed travel bag and anti-chafing boxer briefs to keep your boys stored comfortably. To complete the perfect package for your package are liquid formulations like the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner. Start your day with the deodorant for your boys and stay cool all day with toner to keep you feeling your best all day and night. These formulations will also have you smelling like a king on the big day. And don't forget to smell good not only around your balls, but all over. Made with their signature scent, the Manscaped Refined Cologne will complement your collection with smell perfection. Manscaped created their products for a night just like this and will make your V-Day date say, wow, that's a great set you have there. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code CU Podcast at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code CU Podcast. Join Cupid and shoot your arrow with Manscaped this Valentine's Day. Your balls and lady will thank you. Ian, we first uh, were thinking of doing the podcast last week. We said, oh, we can put it off a few days maybe. Yeah. There's, not, there's not a lot going on. Uh, on and I mentioned I mentioned uh, during one of our catch-up calls, I said, hey, has anything been going on with the Amico lately? Because I hadn't been paying attention. They're like, No, it's been a little quiet. Yeah. It's been a little quiet. And... On Sunday, I was alerted to uh, the LinkedIn accounts of Tommy Talarico, f- former CEO of Intellivision Entertainment, and Phil Adam, who's now the current CEO of Intellivision Entertainment. They changed their LinkedIn bios. I tweeted it out, and it seemed like a mini hell broke loose from that tweet, um, and things happened quickly, which we'll get into. But first off, this was a quiet transition. I don't think they wanted people to know about this. Absolutely not. Um, the fact that there was no press release, the fact that there was nothing said to the uh, the Rev investors, if you want to call them that, on Republic. Um, no mention of that. My source tells me that this was co- quietly done or done around November. It was when Tommy was being shuffled out. There was always two divisions. There was always a division. There was a pro-Tommy faction and a anti-Tommy faction, or we'll say the more probably reasonable business-minded faction, as much as you can be with a with a Doom product like this, that were butting heads a lot. And finally it was decided in November that Tommy should not be the CEO anymore. Tommy is no longer the CEO of Intellivision Entertainment. Around November was uh, probably the last straw for a lot of people that were connected with this, that leaving like this, with the Battle Tanks fiasco, yes. using stolen art assets in there, that was their first game. Uh, that was the deep dive. That was the first deep dive, and I think that was that could have been the final straw. But obviously, the writing was on the long uh, uh, on the lawn. The writing was on the wall. Or was it Shark Shark? Was that the first one? Could have been. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter. At this point, it was, it it was, it was close. Battle tanks was a fiasco. No, none of that really matters. Doesn't in matter. Comparison to all of this since right e, now. since E three of last year, and television has been in a tailspin uh, since June of last year. We said at that point that was the the beginning of the end. Yes. Oh, excuse me. No, the end of the beginning. The end of the beginning. Yeah, it was the end of the beginning because that was their that was their their world premiere. Basically, we have a console, and the reaction was 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 laughable. In people, reality, yeah. that was their last shot. Tommy can say everything he wants about oh, the people who are going to buy this don't know about it yet, et cetera, et cetera. But you are not going to release a video game system and have it successful without the backing of the video game community. And the response to the Amico was laughter, derision. That was their thought. That was the biggest stage in television we'll ever have. Was that E3 video? Yes. 
That's it. That was their peak. Peak marketing, you want to call it that 10 minute video, which was Tommy talking about himself for a minute and a half, and then going and then like shooting out as many facts and then showing all the things we talked about, like uh, people using cell phones as controllers, all the stock photos, uh, Photoshop stock photos, all that stuff. That was that was it for them. After that, it's obviously gone sour. Uh, Phil Adam uh, was 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 on board as a chief revenue officer before that. Yes. And before that, he was, uh, I think, was it? Uh, VP of Business Development, S SVP. So Phil Senior Adam, VP. the former chief revenue officer, is now the new CEO. He's a new CEO. Which okay. makes sense. I mean, he's he's been involved with the business. He was on Spectrum Holobyte and Interplay. I think he was at Interplay when it was when it was closed down when or sold off. When they he was in charge uh, of parceling out Interplay. Oh, okay. Which is why this does not look this. That's one of a million okay. things that doesn't look good for uh, in television right now. Is he was in charge of the piecing it off the the the, the dissolving of Interplay. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's great. Uh, Phil, we'll get into on Sunday night. Uh, he, he's an older guy. We should get into in terms of like the you know new blood for a, a video game company. That's fine though. But he said he's a 67 year old. You know he's been in the industry a long time. On Sunday night, I'm not saying it was response to my tweet, but a, a late Sunday night uh, video call. You want to say a copium sort of uh, party uh, between uh, a few of the uh, cultists slash investors and Phil Adam happened. Uh, done uh, by this person. Hey, pat me in. Fuck you. you. Oh. So that tells you what you need to know about why a, a CEO would even bother to waste time uh, speaking on such a just a low level YouTuber's channel like that to to talk about a transition of a multi million dollar company. That's okay. Uh, it was, but it was very revealing what was said during that. Uh, I also think deep uh, down inside, in television, knows that the only front of positive press and news they have is with these people and you can't leave these people wondering what's going on for 24 hours because they have their pre-order money oh, like right. the, the, the hardcore is all the money they have and all the money they can bank on we'll talk about point. that more too we'll talk about that more but so so phil adam was on this he was on for a half hour on this chat with uh, two investors who never, almost never disclose that they invest when they do these pro Amico videos, which which legally they have to with the Federal Trade Commission, but that's okay. That's okay. Who cares? Um, he said a lot of things. Uh, by the way, Phil Adam and John Alvarado are the only people on the January 6th statement of facts. Remember we said Tommy was con conspicuous in his absence on that, even though he yes. tweeted it out? And so Tommy even said, that wasn't me. Uh, yes. There was a reply somewhere where he said that wasn't me. That was, he said who it was. Um, which, and Tommy's been doing less interviews the past few, uh, almost none the past few months. The last one was like the Slopes Game Room one. That was, I think, one of the last ones he really did. Um, and so, like, that really showed you that yeah, they probably said they probably muzzled him and said you're no longer the, the guy. If, as a reminder, a CEO is the chief executive officer. They are in charge for establishing the vision of the company and executing that vision yes. to the best of their abilities. Obviously, they thought. Uh, way too late that Tommy was not the person for the job to do that. I would I, I would point out this too real quick before we get into it. Tommy has already done some damage control and said, but I'm still the president and we make all of our decisions together. Did you read that and be like, I, like I immediately no. just said, how fucking pathetic, man. You've got to no. like constantly. But the, the, the big thing here is um, you, you can try to spin this however you want. There is no situation especially with a company that has yet to release a product where a change of a CEO is just done for shits and giggles because things are getting ready to launch. Like he's on the rocket. Ship. I got to pay attention we're on the launch pad, ready to launch. the rocket. I, I, I don't have the time for these positions anymore. I, I, I got to pay attention to the creative stuff. Tommy can say what he wants this close to launch. No CEO is changing unless there is a massive, massive problem. And, or they need a, a change in direction because the, yes. the focus of the company is changing, which we'll get into as well. So this was in the works for a few months. Um, I already checked. Uh, there's a video game games live scheduled for April 2nd in Tacoma, Washington. Yeah. So Tommy's head's been out of this for months. He wants to go back to the safety of doing that. The cosplay experience is over. He wants to take his ball and go home. He's gone home. He's done. Um, he realizes that this is in a lot more trouble probably than it's worth. 
Um, at this point, it might be humiliating. Who knows? In order to uh, to be the head of of a, an absolute fucking disaster, uh, the past few years. And uh, it's no surprise to me that he was all uh, piss and vinegar, and now we yeah, he's no silence. Words. There's no yeah. words. Just it's humiliated. Yes. And this should have been done at the very least two years ago after he started attacking critics and dissenters in early 2020 when he started uh, libeling and slandering people, not just us, others. Um, that's when it should have happened. That's when the, the, the board of directors of Intelligence should have said, this is enough. We can't have someone like you in charge anymore. That's when it should have happened. I would have really respected the direction of the project then. Yes. Or when you realize we can't have some guy spending his waking hours on Atari age posting shit after shit, thousands of posts, and also going on as many interviews as he can with mo with uh, a lot of channels that have like that'll be seen. It's not just the, the fact that you know th these YouTubers have like a hundred and three hundred subscribers. That's not the point. That, that doesn't tell you about the, the content of their uh, the quality of quality of their content. content. It's the fact that. It's a waste of time because no one will see those videos. Right. How should a CEO be spending their time? Not doing that. Not posting on Atari age. Not going after the centers. Not challenging someone like me to a fucking debate on Twitter like your Ben Shapiro. They should be running the company best they can. And obviously that hasn't happened. That's all I'm going to say. Fare thee well. Um, you should have been gone two years ago, at least. That said, I was interested in seeing what Phil Adam what his demeanor was, what his responses would be. And the, the too long didn't watch version before I get into it is that he is uh, in a lot of ways, Tommy 2.0, but more professional because he has the same, he's been with the company for years. He's had the same vision of the company. Otherwise he wouldn't be working there. So he obviously thinks that this is a viable product. Right. And that's, I think the, the thing that people need, uh, another thing that is important to point out is this isn't like a new person coming in to save it. This is still pulling from the same oh, tainted yeah. pool. Yes. It's literally, it, it's just a restructuring of names. It just shows that the people within Intellivision finally had enough. And yes. yeah, I mean, probably tied them to a fucking chair and they were like, this is what is going to happen going forward. Yes. And that probably happened, like you said, around, around fallish. It happened. I think I think we'll get into later. I think there was like August, September. I think there was thoughts about this. And then obviously the last straw was the, those videos, the deep dives and things like that. I think we should have noticed, too. Well, it, it, it's easy to see clues in hindsight. It was tougher to see them than the deep dive after battle tanks, whatever it was, missile command or something actually says Tommy says, it's a CCO. It's a CCO does. And it does not say CEO. I'll look it up right now. It does not say CEO. And I remember battle. thinking that was weird. Yes. And I remember some other people thinking it was weird. And then... Was that, was that on the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth for Battle Tanks, by the way? Yeah, I'll look that up. <laughs> so uh, the thing I realized was, um, or this. that someone pointed out, was that they said, hey, you're a CCO? I thought you were a CEO. And Tommy said something in response to it, like, uh, probably on the Facebook group, and I read it elsewhere, um, uh, I wear basically it was it was the, the lot I of wear hats. Many hats. It was it okay. was the lot of hats sort of thing. He was CEO slash chief creative officer November twenty third on the reupload the fourth one of battle uh, tanks now tank battle. I got to see what the next one was. After. I got to see when I think it's missile command after it's that missile where command? it's just CCO. Okay. Yeah, because we did watch that evolution. Yeah. So the order was uh, it was tank battle first, then Astro Smash, then Shark Shark, then Missile Command. Oh, okay. Missile Command was the last one. They only did they only did four. They did four. Uh, a Missile Command was December twentieth. He's still CEO on this December twentieth. So here's the thing about it: you have to file these changes usually, uh, these big changes uh, with the state for like an LLC or corporation. There was probably some lag time between that, which we'll get into the the, the total reveal of of the latest document. So. Behind the scenes, though, from what I from what I hear from my source, it was done by then. He was no longer sure. really acting. And, as I CEO. mean, if Tommy ever says anything truthful, uh, they, he did say that these were like ready to go and in, in the can by the end of the summer. So these could have been videos that were already shot. Sure, I mean, they just didn't update the lower thirds. Yeah, or didn't care about it. Okay, uh, so here's what some of Phil Adams said. Here's the highlights that I put down here, Ian. I watch in two X speed. There's no way I'm watching it in real time. No, I skimmed it at 2x. If we don't deliver good content, we will go the way of Ouya. You wish you can get the sales of the Ouya. You wish you can get, what was it, 80 to 100,000 Ouyas to people. If you end like the Ouya, you, I, I would, I mean, that's... I'd be shocked. I'd be shocked. That would be, that would be a uh, success of a disaster. 
I mean, good old, I mean, I know, uh, what's his name? Michael Packer thinks you can sell a million Amicos in a year, but let's just focus on reality. You wish you can get to the Ouya. Um, this next statement, there's not much profit on the console. Be glad you locked in your pre-order price. Such a strange statement, especially since like we knew that there was a market markup on this that the former CEO always said that retailers love us because there's a margin so on this. So my take on this uh, is Tommy, my take on this is Tommy put together a, a bill of goods in his head. Or not even a bill of goods. He just thought, okay, it's going to cost this amount of money. Right. A bill of goods in his Well, I mean, looked yeah. at some stuff. Like a lot of things, whether it's the clips in these trailers that are from 2019, um, using the same footage from the family trailers that they use, I think he was running always and spouting information that was old or unknown. So I think probably pre-pandemic, he probably had a running total in his head that could oh, no. have been true. He pre, had a pre-pandemic. Oh yeah, that he he could have done it, and then prices started to go up, and he made the he made the. Feature creep and prices on uh, components started to go up over the pandemic. And instead of pulling the trigger, he just kept waiting for oh. prices to go down. And now they're not going down. And that once upon a time cheap console has ballooned into something that they're not making any money. I, on. I think you're being too nice about it, to be honest, because that, that original reveal at PRG 2018, that's where he had the console price, 149 and 179. Yeah. He pulled that out of his ass. That was based on nothing. No, I know. I I, I just mean in his head, he yes. was probably looking at like similar something. types of consoles. Yes. But he pulled that out of his absolute ass. Oh, at yeah. that point in time, there was no board. There was no uh, R and D done no, at that I know. point. What I'm saying is when uh, he's when he was talking about great profits for the system, sure. he was probably using some figure he made up in his head from years oh, prior. Okay, that's, that's what I'm saying. And and then applying the 250 to it, he's uh, like, look at all this money. But I'm telling you how how much of a horrible businessman he is. The fact that at PRGE, when the idea of that console was still literally an idea yeah he, he had, had a price. price attached you don't do that what other game company comes out and announces a price right away we didn't know the price for the xbox series or the playstation 5 for months and months because you actually have to see what it comes down to yeah, when you make do it r d and know yeah. what what uh, the bill of uh, goods is going to be and things like that right a bill of materials uh and things like that um console price will increase Phil comes out and says that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I, we should have, if there are bullet points at the beginning, this yeah. is a big one. They're not saying this thing's going to go down. And I remember Tommy used to talk about price drops after a year. No, the price of this is going to go up. The already impossible to sell $250 2016 cell phone. Tech, yeah. Tech with shitty games that run jittery is going to go up in price. So consider yourself fucking lucky for only having to pay 250 this is my thing when it comes to this this announcement of the price. To me, I think what he's trying to do is create a conceivable scenario for them to wrap this all up. I think he's like, hey, we're going to have to raise the price on this. What's going to happen? They're, by the time anything comes out, they'll be like, if we have to raise the price on this, no one's going to buy it. We're going to wrap. Yeah. Blame it on COVID cost of goods. I don't think you're ever actually going to see a point where an Amico costs more money because that's fucking insane. But uh, they will use this increase in costs, I think, to wrap everything it, up. Well, it's a scare tactic. Yes. It's a scare tactic. And it's also a scare tactic to keep pre-orders. To in. keep pre-orders so you don't get so you don't ask for a hundred dollar deposit back, but also maybe for the few people out there for, that somehow would put in a fresh order on, on GameStop where you can uh, put it down your deposit or on the site you still can. It was a scare tactic. That's exactly what it was. Please don't take your money out, pre-order people. Oh, but also, you want to get in, get in early. That's the theme this week. Get in early, Ian, because it'll cost you more later. There. This was more shocking to me than that. The software prices will go up, in quotes, 50 to 100% in some cases. 50 to a. These used to be 3 to $8 at the start. Now we're talking... Uh, thirteen to twenty five dollars, something say, like that. Just say fifteen to twenty five, something yeah. like that. So in that range. My, here's my here's the thing: they have to try to make this look appealing, yet also cut people's expectation. It, it's weird. So I think they need to pretend like they're a business going forward. So saying something like saying something that the game prices has 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 to go up is good on one hand. It would be good if they announced that two years ago and said, hey, look, we suddenly realized that $10 games, $8 games with no DLC. Give it's, our not, it's not paying the bills. Give our, don't give our developers any money. 
So it's going to make it hard for people to develop solely for Amico because there's no money in it. So we're going to say, hey, guys, we really wanted to keep the price of these games here, but we're going to have to raise them so that well, our developers can make money and so that we can make money. <laughs> and then you could have started to see different games. The problem is, is now they've hammered that pricing for so long and people have started to see they've already started doing the deep dives. So people see these games. As garbage. As garbage. And then they go, holy shit, you want me to pay $20 for this? Whereas there could be a good... Mo like, if this looked like it was actually going to come out, that could be a good thing. Like, hey, we're going to increase what these games can charge, so we're going to get more developers we, on. Oh, board. we can get better IPs. We can get better licenses. That's what Phil said. We need, we need to pay the, for the licenses. But that's not going to happen. That's bullshit. So now all people are really thinking is, like, you want me to pay $20 for Astro Smash? It's bad. Like, the messaging is bad. Every nugget that could potentially be good in some way currently looks like shit for them. Yeah. You, you, you want, well, I think it was Astro Smash a pack in, but you want to pay 20 bucks for a crappier missile command. But right. the same point remains. Right. Like, that's that's the point. It's like, what? That was the most shocking thing to me when I heard that. Because this is supposed to be family friendly. It's not family friendly anymore if these games cost 20 bucks and they're 10 minute games. Like, it's all about the value. Oh, they cost less than, than Mario Kart. You'll be playing Mario Kart 8 for years. You'll be playing a, a crappy missile command for years. You'll be playing it for a few days. And then that's it. That's the last thing you ever do. I was talking about that. Astro Smash is always the game that we say looks the best, but I guarantee you that, I, I mean, and I, I'm not saying this to be a jerk. I'm saying this because it's true. You would catch yourself yawning by the fourth level playing that. It's a simple game. These are games that were, the original impetus of these games were 40 years ago when they were quick arcade games. That's it. That's not in vogue anymore. As, 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 as the popular It is, uh, but you got to make them snappy. You got to make them difficult, flashy, hard to master. And that's not what they're doing. Well, I mean, on a mass scale to appeal to everyone. Oh, yeah. Four-year-olds don't want to play Astro Smith. That's all we know that. Yes. Um, working on the footprint. Oh, they're going to have an update in the ship date by end of February. That could mean anything. Uh, this is an interesting one. Working on the footprint of the OS so games like Toe to Jam and Earl can get done. Wow. So that tells me that even if Toe Jam and Earl was in development, it's not. The dev came out and said it's not. The Amico cannot run that newer uh, Toe Jam and Earl from a few years ago. It can't run it. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. That's that's they they let slip a little bit there by saying games like uh, Toe Jam and Earl because the Toe Jam and Earl dev team didn't state anything. They were actually pretty neutral. Pretty neutral. They were we, being we very never signed a contract. We talked to them, but it was never anything signed. Right. But by saying that they would have to work on the footprint of the OS so games like that could even run. Yeah, what that's saying is that it either couldn't run or it was so bloated that they didn't want to spend the time on it. Remember, the Amico, it's like, what is it, two gigs of RAM on it? It's like so low power to begin with. We know that. It's a right. cell phone chip inside, the Snapdragon. And, so, and Toe Jam and Earl is not a, uh, uh, I, I can't imagine it's a very power-hungry game, but it is at least a modern game. Yes, it's a modern game. So that is a extremely, I mean, that's why we see all the jittery low frame rate on it, because it's, like, it's unoptimized, the OS. Right. Uh, but none of this is positive, by the way. And the people... And the, it flies in the uh, face of what Tommy said, too. We've had, it's working. We've had a working uh, OS for uh, a year and a half. Yeah, but is it done? Is it functional? Right. Could you put it on a system and ship it out? And these, no. and these individuals... Hey, Pat Ian, fuck you. Uh, oh. They were hearing this information like they were at, like talking about grandma uh, dying, basically. That's what it sounded like. It was like they were, take, they were receiving all this bad news, and it was just like they had no proper response, because what can you respond to? All? None of this is good news. How is any of this good news? It's all terrible news yeah. that you hear. Um, and then this is where I said, this guy is Tommy 2.0. This is where I said it. He said around, it was like 22 minutes in, dissenters are saying things to get clicks or whatever. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. To me, that sounds like something that Tommy was probably like, you got to make sure you give, throw a jab at those guys. I Come on, Phil. You've been in the industry make actually you know, producing games since the 80s and helping, uh, you know, you know that the, the, the proof is in the pudding. The products speak to them for themselves. You know that. Yeah, I you saw that. I saw that as like um, just the weakest attempt at pathetic. being like we're still in this. Come on, Phil, I want to give you a chance, but we now got I can't. This. I, don't. I, I can't now. I don't. I can't. I don't give well, I can't because you believe in that. this is a, a viable product. Well, maybe not because you're making six figures, as we'll get in the report. We know how much all the, the people, uh, the higher ups are making as a CEO. But I mean, like, it's ridiculous. Um, it was. 
insane again that it was on a Sunday night. Like it was almost like an emergency, sort of like we have to, it's like the spin room after a presidential debate. Oh, we have to spin this news. We have to spin it, and this is what's right. happening. And it's amazing. It's amazing how potentially a simple tweet could have, could have, uh, could have uh, uh, conjured up that, <laughs> that, that group. It's nuts. But we have more to discuss, a lot more to discuss with the Intellivision uh, Amico.